Did you know that we could be on the brink of having a new and improved oral minocetal available for treating male and female pattern hair loss? This new drug, VDPH L01, is said to be four times better than the current minoxidil options that we have available to us, and it's also said to be tolerated better from a side effect perspective. Well, in today's video, as both a hair loss doctor who treats patients with hair loss on a daily basis, and someone that has endured a 10-year angiogenic alopecia journey myself, I'm going to dig into the current available data on this new and exciting version of minoxidil called VDPH L01 out of the company Veridermix in the USA and I'm going to give you my pros and cons on this particular treatment based on what we know thus far. So stick around to the end to learn some new information on a new and exciting drug which could be on our shelves if FDA approved within potentially the next two to three years. So before we jump into it, let's give a quick brief rundown of what minoxidil is and how it works for hair loss. So if you haven't caught some of my videos previously on minoxidil, minoxidil was originally used as a blood pressure medication at much higher doses. And in the 80s, it was found that people taking this blood pressure medication started to restore their hair and have hair growth in other places around the body. So it was then approved by the FDA in the 1980s to be used as a topical drug for male and female pattern hair loss. It is also used off-label when taken orally in lower doses to also treat male and female pattern hair loss. Now, how does it work? Well, they're not still entirely sure on the exact mechanism of action, although there is lots proposed. But with respect to here, it is a drug which causes vasodilation, which improves nutrient delivery, oxygenation, uh, and blood flow delivery to the hair follicles of the scalp. Now, it is a drug that is actually in its prodrug form, which means it needs to be sulfated or converted into its active drug form, minoxidil sulfate through a process where an enzyme called sulfur transferase converts it into this active form. Now, what's interesting is that only a certain percentage of the population actually have high numbers of this particular enzyme, which then means not everyone gets the benefits of this drug for their hair. From a hair loss perspective, it is said to work on various different signaling pathways, one of which is the beta catenin signaling pathway, and it is also said to potentially lead to the release of certain growth factors in the scalp. Now it can be taken orally at low doses such as 2.5 or 5 milligrams, usually taken once a day, or it is often used topically with people applying a 5% or a 2% and sometimes higher concentrations to the scalp once or twice a day. The downside that they found over the last 40 years is that about 90% of people actually discontinue using this drug due to either a lack of efficacy or effectiveness or side effects. Now, some of those side effects can be things such as when you're using it topically, pruritus or itchiness of the scalp, a premature telogen effluvium where about 10 to 20% of people can experience a, a transient shedding of the hair before they actually get any gains and that can occur over a six to eight week period. Some people get swelling of the ankles, swelling of the face, flushing, facial, facial flushing, headaches, palpitations, reduced blood pressure, and then hair growth in unwanted places, places you don't want it, and places where people spend thousands of dollars to get rid of the hair. Now, based on whether you're using it topically or orally, will sort of lend to them a difference in those, and will lend to a difference in the incidence of those particular side effects. So more generically, those are some of the side effects that people experience. The other downside is how effective it is. Now, it's said that about 40% of people will get some benefit in the sense that it will reduce shedding and about another 40% of people will see some thickening of the hair on their scalp. Now, when it's been looked into in studies comparing oral minoxidil taken daily versus topical minoxidil 5% used twice daily, there is not much difference in the results found between the two. Now, from a pharmacokinetics perspective, when you take oral minoxidil, about 30 to 60 minutes later, you have a massive dump of this drug into the system, which then causes vasodilation, so an opening of blood vessels around the entire body. Now, you have a massive surge in minoxidil within the bloodstream over a 30 to 60 minute period, but then the difficulty with this current oral minoxidil form that we have is that within about two hours, that peak concentration is dissipated, starting to taper off near effect and wanes. So you get a massive surge, of the drug in your blood 
and you have a minimal length of time in which this drug actually asserts its positive effect on the hair follicle. So that obviously isn't optimal with respect to hair gains, which is why then this VDPH L01 is potentially going to solve some of these problems. So how then is VDPH L01 different from the current minoxidil form that I've just described. The VDPH, we'll call it VDPH for short, just to save my tongue getting twisted, is a drug which is going to be a reformed, reviewed, recalibrated version of minoxidil, which is going to be specifically designed to treat male and female pattern hair loss. Now it is going to be an extended release version. So once ingested twice a day, it will be taken twice a day at the dose of 8.5 milligrams, once ingested, it gives a slow release of the drug into the system to so maintain a therapeutic window of this drug, which gives optimal exposure of the sulfated version of minoxidil to those hair follicles. The other benefit of this is that because you don't get this massive surge, and a massive surge which you see currently with oral minoxidil, which is currently above the recommended cardiac safety threshold, this particular drug does not exceed that recommended cardiac safety threshold, which is great. So in theory, you should have better tolerability and a lower incidence of those cardiac specific side effects. So in summary, based on the mechanism of action of what this drug is, it's a new and improved version of minoxidil, which is extended release taken twice a day, which gives you a prolonged exposure of the benefits of the drug to your hair follicles, but in a threshold which is lower than the threshold for causing cardiovascular related side effects. So how effective has this drug been in the trials? Well, the open label phase two trial, which have been underway across the US in the last couple of years, we reported on at conferences earlier this year. In 21 men taking VDPH 8.5 milligrams twice daily over a four month period, it was found that at month two, the average hair count increase was 37.5 hairs per square centimeter meter compared to baseline and at month four the average increase in hair count from baseline was 47.3 hairs per square centimeter so those are pretty good gains in such a short space of time they then did a retrospective blinded comparison where they took a bunch of dermatologists to review photos from three different groups. So group one, we're taking VDPH, which was the 21 men that we just spoke about, taking VDPH 8.5 milligrams orally for four months. Then group two, with 33 patients, we're taking the standard five milligram oral minoxidil every day for a six month period. And then the third group was the 34 patients using one mil of 5% minoxidil applied topically twice a day. Now what they found is that the experts rated that about 82% of the VDPH group achieved moderate improvements over the four month period versus only about 20% in the other two groups over the six month time period. So according to that data, it could be about four times better than the standard preparations that we have available to us today. And if you look at these before and afters, there's some pretty promising results there that I'm sure that if yourself or even myself, if I was using this particular drug and I was getting these gains, yeah, I would be happy with this, especially at four months and if I didn't have the side effects. The other important finding within these trials is that VDPH has so far not revealed any serious side effects and no cardiac related side effects in the trials thus far, which is very promising. So where are they at now from a trial perspective? Well, they are currently enrolling or underway as large phase three randomized controlled trials across USA at multiple different centers where they're looking to do both a male study with over 300 participants and a female study with over 300 participants, both with androgenic alopecia or pattern hair loss. And it will look to be a 52 week trial assessing different doses of VDPH compared to placebo and control groups. And then they will do a four week follow up after this point in time. Now, all going well, this could potentially be approved within the next two to three years. It has been over $220 million raised by investors over the last 18 months. So there is big confidence in this drug being the third only ever FDA approved drug for treating male and female pattern hair loss. That all being said, what is my take on this as a hair loss doctor, as someone that treats hair loss on a daily basis and someone that has had good exposure to pharmaceutical companies in prior roles as a chief of medicine of one of the largest cosmetic companies in the world? Well, let's focus on the positives first. Positive number one is that this is a drug that would be specifically created and designed for androgenic alopecia, which is great. That then means that you wouldn't be taking a version of this drug which was designed for another indication, which is blood pressure. So that then lends to you having potentially better results for your hair and less impact on the body. 
The other thing is, is that if it's better tolerated overall, well then people are going to be more compliant with the drug, which again then means that you've got a better chance of long-term success whilst using this drug. And the results thus far from the trials that are available to us have been promising, albeit small trials, on small participants, on a small number of participants for a short period of time, the results have been promising and the drug has been well tolerated. What are the limitations, however, of which there are a few? It's always important for us to play devil's advocate with these sorts of things because sometimes the hype can overwhelm us and we get very excited, but we need to bring it back down to earth and be realistic and weigh in on some of these limitations. So, limitations. The studies have been tiny, 21 participants, have been reported on thus far in the phase two trials. The other thing there is that the trials have not been reported in a journal format. It's just been either data which has been discussed at conferences or released in articles online, but there's no peer reviewed journals published thus far. So that's something maybe that's important to consider. The studies have been of short duration, so only four months in total where people have been taking VDPH. This would be a drug that if it was used for a chronic condition like male or female potent hair loss, people would be taking it for years and years and years if not decades so we want to have long-term data on this particular drug so we can have more safety and assurance that if patients were to take it that they can be certain about what particular side effects they might be up for there's no female data yet been published on there has been allegedly females being trialed on with vdph but yet there is no data available on how female patients have fared whilst taking this drug so that is something that we also need to know more about. This drug is one that needs to be taken twice a day. So there I see that there's a potential issue with compliance. Some people find it hard enough to keep up with just taking one medication once a day. If you were to take the medication twice a day, I can see that a number of people might not be able to comply with that regimen and that may lead to them not getting the results that they would like, which then leads to often discontinuation. So that's another thing to consider. And the last thing is we also need to know more about non-cardiac related side effects. So if you're taking BDPH, which is going to be potentially better at growing hair on your scalp, well, then we might then consider that it's probably going to be better at growing hair everywhere, unless it's scalp specific. So the issue there is that, you know, some of 20 to 30% of people get hypertrichosis, hair growth in other areas when they take oral formulations of minoxidil. So are we then going to see more people get more hair growth in other areas that they're not happy with? And will that be something that leads to discontinuation? What about the other things? If it's a more effective version of minoxidil, are we going to see more transient premature telogen effluvium when they start, when people start taking the drug? Are we going to see other issues that aren't necessarily related to the cardiac department of the body? Well, these are all things that we need to know with longer term studies on larger population groups. So in summary, this is a new and exciting hair loss drug that could be available to the market within the next two to three years. There is a bunch of investors that have huge confidence in its ability. And yes, so far, if we just look at the data that's available to us and some of the media hype, it looks promising in the sense that it's effective, has been well tolerated and is designed specifically for male and female pattern hair loss. We just need more time to know though, however, if in actuality this drug lives up to the hype and the safety factor also lives up to the hype. So I hope you've enjoyed today's video. If you have any comments, please drop them in the comment section below. Is this something that you would potentially look into yourself if you're struggling with male, if you're struggling with male or female pattern hair loss? Is this something that you wouldn't consider? Have you looked into it? Have you done your own research? Post in the comments below. And if you hadn't subscribed yet and you like these videos, well, please like and subscribe. Look forward to bringing you another video next week. We jump back into the finasteride side of things. I just wanted to take a brief pause on the finasteride to deliver this one whilst it is new and exciting and hot off the press. Have a good week. See you next week. Cheers.